good evening says Hound Dog Steve wishing you a very pleasant evening and welcome back to my channel and we're going to talk a little bit about the debt again. Uh, I just came across this very interesting article by Michael Snyder it's on Zero Hedge and uh, it is about the biggest debt bubble the world has ever seen. Now he listed at uh, around about 188 trillion but actually I heard uh, it was at one zero higher than that, 1.8 quadrillion. Anyway, regardless, these are both absolutely incredible numbers and uh, nobody seems to know quite how they're going to put all of this debt to bed. Um, I'm betting that there is absolutely no way that this debt is going to be paid off. Uh, somehow it has to be reconciled and uh, the only way you can reconcile that is to peg it to some kind of stable foundation uh, like gold, uh, maybe silver uh, or even Bitcoin but something that will regulate and absorb all of the existing debt out there today and uh, that might be some way in which you can reconcile uh, all of the debts and uh, to whom the money is owed. But you know, another big issue here is that I don't think that anybody really knows anymore who the money is owed to. Uh, I suspect one day uh, you're going to see all of the banks will be sitting around a great big circular table and they'll come to the sudden realization that they owe all of this debt to themselves. And uh, so rather than the crash, you know, I, I don't like using the words crash or um, collapse or what, whatever. Um, really what is going to happen is that the banks will just refuse to lend to each other. Uh, this is what actually happened in 2008 and the asset-backed commercial paper, which is the oil that keeps our financial system lubricated. This is like overnight loans, short-term loans, bridging loans, uh, that kind of thing, basically came to a complete stand still and uh, you just cannot function just like a car can't function without oil uh, so the financial system cannot function without its oil which is asset-backed commercial paper but uh, basically ever since we came off the gold standard in 1972 it has literally been the wild west out there and it is the manipulation of assets that has been the biggest problem aside from in inflation which is an inherent flaw within our uh, fractional reserve system uh, every time uh, the bank gets a dollar they create nine dollars and lend them out and uh, that is inflation very simply put and I am, I'm actually going to be putting a video together to explain very simply how inflation works uh, how interest can never be paid and that's where a lot of this accumulated debt is from is the interest spiral certainly in government debt uh, it is the interest spiraling out of control and I will explain uh, how that all works in another video. But suffice it to say, uh, it is a very nasty part of our financial system and if you don't pay close attention to it, it actually usually spells the end of financial systems. And uh, this is why the, um, the, in the past they used to have Jubilee Days because uh, basically it was a cancellation of all debt and when you did that it took all of the inflation out of the system things settled down again and you didn't see horrible sights like bankers hanging from lampposts well certainly horrible sights from the bankers point of view most of the people were usually pretty happy uh, because they were so angry at that point uh, that they had no money to spend uh, they'd lost everything to foreclosure and uh, it was absolute desperation Anyway, let's flip over to this article that I found and I think you will find, as I did, that it is a very, very interesting little piece and an interesting explanation. Here we go. From Zero Hedge, global debt tops $188 trillion, officially the biggest debt bubble the world has ever seen. It is authored by Michael Snyder. The world is now $188 trillion in debt and that number continues to grow rapidly each year. It is a form of enslavement that is deeply insidious because most of those living on the planet do not even understand how the system works. And even if they did, most of them would have absolutely no hope of ever getting free from it. The borrower is a servant of the lender and the global financial system is designed to funnel as much wealth to the top 0.1% as possible. And of course, throughout human history, there has always been slavery. And the primary motivation for having slaves is to extract an economic benefit from those that are enslaved. 
And even though most of us don't like to think of ourselves as slaves today, the truth is that the global elite are extracting more wealth from all of us than ever before. So much of our labor is going to make them wealthy, and yet most people don't even realize what is happening. Uh, yes, and that is what I call the point of total evil. Uh, the vast majority of humanity is enslaved by debt. When you go into credit card debt and you make only small payments each month, you can easily end up paying back more than double the amount of money that you originally borrowed. So where does all that money go? Well, of course, it goes to the financial institution that you got your credit card from. And in turn, that financial institution is owned by the global elite. In essence, you willingly became a debt slave when you chose to go into credit card debt and the hard work that it took to earn enough money to pay back that debt with interest ended up enriching others. On a much larger scale, the same thing is happening to entire nations. Today, the United States government is nearly $23 trillion in debt. In essence, we have been collectively enslaved and we have been obligated to pay back all of that money with interest. Of course, at this point, it is literally impossible for us to ever pay back all that debt. And every year we add another trillion dollars or so to the balance. The global elite are now extracting more than $500 billion in interest from this debt on an annual basis. And it is expected that number will greatly escalate in the years ahead. It is not an accident that the Federal Reserve and the Federal Income Tax were both instituted in 1913. The Federal Reserve System was designed to create an endless debt spiral that would get the federal government in as much debt as possible. And since that time, the size of a national debt has gotten more than 7,000 times larger. And the federal income tax was needed as the mechanism through which our wealth is transferred to the government to service all of this debt. It is truly a deeply, deeply insidious system and the American people should refuse to back any politician that does not favor shutting it down. But at this point, it isn't even a major political issue in our nation. And of course, the United States is far from alone. Even though we can't get the whole world to agree on much of anything, somehow virtually the entire planet has been convinced that debt-based central banking is the way to go. In fact, at this point, 99.9% .9 of the population of the world lives in a country that has a central bank. According to Wikipedia, there are only nine very small nations that do not have a central bank at this point. Andorra, Isle of Man, Monaco, Nauru, Kiribati, Tuvalu, Palau, Marshall Islands and the Federated States of Micronesia. If you combine the populations of all those nine nations together, it comes to much less than 0.1% of the total global population. Do you think that this is just a coincidence? The global elite do not want humanity to be free. They want us to be in as much debt as possible so that we can make them richer. When you realize how badly the game has been rigged, then a lot of things start to make a whole lot more sense. For example, for those that understand how the system works, it is certainly not surprising that the total amount of debt in the world has hit a new all-time record high of $188 trillion. The global debt load has surged to a new all-time record equivalent to more than double the world's economic output, IMF Chief Kristalina Georgieva warned on Thursday. While private sector borrowing accounts for the vast majority of the total, the rise puts governments and individuals at risk if the economy slows, she said. Global debt, both public and private, has reached an all-time high of $188 trillion. This amounts to about 230% of world output, Georgieva said in a speech to open a two-day conference on debt. That number has risen by $24 trillion since 2016 and it is the biggest debt bubble that the world has ever seen by a very wide margin. And of course, at some point, this debt bubble is going to burst in a global disaster of epic proportions. But meanwhile, the global elite are going to continue to milk all of us for as long as they possibly can. Here in the United States, we have been on the greatest debt binge in the history of our nation. Since the last financial crisis, U.S. government debt has more than doubled. State and local government debt has ballooned to ridiculous proportions in much of the nation. Corporate debt has doubled. Student loan debt has more than doubled. Auto loan debt just keeps hitting new record highs. And U.S. consumers are now $14 trillion in debt. Our mountain of debt has become so colossal that the only way to keep the game going is to borrow even more money. 
but by borrowing more money we make our enslavement even worse. Meanwhile, those that are holding our debt just continue to live the high life as they laugh all the way to the bank. So, as you can see, uh, this debt situation is absolutely unbelievable. In the province in which I live, Ontario, which is in Canada, um, uh, our province owes $350 billion. Now, there are only 10 million people living in Ontario, and about 50% of those are either into retirement or uh, just about to start retirement in the next year or so. So I have no idea how uh, this $350 billion is going to get paid off. Uh, we have an infrastructure crisis taking place in Canada and the rest of the world, uh, it would appear. You know, most of our infrastructure was done, um, it was put in somewhere between the 50s and the 70s. Like right after the Second World War, there was a massive rebuilding of all of the Western countries. And that, I'm afraid, has basically come to the end of its useful life. But sadly, our politicians have been fiddling whilst Rome burns. And now um, we are up to our eyeballs in debt. And instead of setting some money aside in the largest post-Second World War boom, um, this is the biggest boom, and of course, along with the biggest bubble, that the world has ever known. Uh, but these governments, instead of uh, socking a little bit away for a rainy day, oh no, uh, they used it to create more debt. Uh, that money got sucked up in consultancy, bureaucracy, uh, mind-numbingly poor decisions being made, um, absolute uh, failures, in fact, uh, to meet the mark, uh, money having to be respent and respent and respent to uh, do the same job, to investigate. I mean, it's just been a comedy of errors. But anyways, I, I, this is an unresolvable situation as far as I can see. So what can you do? What can we do? Uh, well, I would certainly have some change uh, lying around. Uh, and, you know, I, I'm talking maybe, you know, three or four hundred dollars of loose change. You know, when you come home, and this is what I do, I just empty my pockets and I put it in a jar. Uh, loonies, toonies, um, nickels, dimes, quarters. Uh, this may be the only acceptable form of currencies if you cannot get into an ATM. Uh, because uh, plastic money or paper money, I want to say plastic, our uh, notes now, our bank notes are made of plastic, uh, may not be accepted because uh, they don't last. Uh, so, you may find coinage uh, is the only thing that people will accept. Of course, gold and silver, uh, some silver dollars and some gold coins, uh, uh, silver eagles and so on and so forth. Uh, these again will be acceptable currency uh, and you probably won't need very much either. It will be an extremely tradable commodity. Uh, personally, now I, I'm going to say here, got a disclaimer, I am not a financial advisor. Uh, so, you know, I'm just talking about what I've been looking into, what I've been thinking about, uh, some of the things I've been hearing uh, my friends doing. Uh, uh, so another thing that you might do is, uh, you know, put a couple of hundred bucks into Bitcoin or Litecoin or Ethereum. Uh, if the electrical system and the telephone, cellular, internet system stays up, uh, we will be using cryptocurrencies to transact, I can assure you, uh, because it has its own separate value system and it is, uh, I mean, it's connected to the dollar right now, but it would separate and it would level out at its own value. And uh, again, this, this would be an international trading tool. So you'd find businesses that need goods from overseas would be using Bitcoin and the like. So overall, uh, it's a, a tangible asset. You need something that is in your hands. And I know Bitcoin is on the internet, but what I mean is it's not connected to the banking system, that so you don't have to go through an intermediary to access your uh, money. Okay, uh, because um, as the bank shut down, and they will, uh, they will close that window if there is any uncertainty as to what the value of a dollar is. And they will sit that way until they've had discussions at the central bank level. And that might take a week, two weeks, three weeks. Um, look at what happened in Cyprus. Look what happened in Greece. You know, so uh, do be prepared. Have a little bit of hard cash set aside just in case. Coinage is better than notes. 
uh, but anything is better than nothing. Uh, maybe a little silver coin, a little gold if you can afford it, a little Bitcoin, Litecoin or Ethereum. Uh, because I can tell you this whole financial system is upside down. Uh, we're now talking about uh, the possibility of entering into negative interest rates, which is absolutely insane. That is the inverse of what investment is supposed to mean. You know, you, you, you pay... Uh, the person who you're investing with for the privilege of investing instead of the investor paying you a dividend on, on uh, what you have invested. Uh, that is absolutely crazy. And what about all the savers? What about all the savers? And all of the assets that were really debts converted into assets. Uh, one of the little things that happened during the, well, leading up to the banking crisis in 2007-2008 was what they called a credit default swap. So the banks had got to a situation where they had no more assets with which to back the massive amounts of debt they were creating. And so what they did was they went to an insurance company, this is how AIG got involved, and they asked AIG if they would give them insurance to cover a default on that mortgage. Hence credit default swap. And of course because insurance companies don't have to have the same kind of underwriting that banks do, uh, they covered, they, they, they just had to assess the risk and they gave the banks a certain price. And what that allowed the banks to do was to then treat that mortgage as an asset instead of a liability. Uh, because no matter what happened, if the owner of the house paid out the mortgage, the bank got the money, and if they did, they had a credit default swap uh, to insure that mortgage with. Uh, so they renamed a debt as an asset. Then they sliced that asset up into very tiny pieces and put it with all kinds of junky debt like uh, motor vehicle debt, uh, motorcycles, boats, recreational vehicles, all this kind of stuff uh, to give it the air of legitimacy. And then they sold that debt into the open market, mostly into pension funds. So this is an, in, and it's an insane situation. Uh, so when this will happen, nobody knows. Uh, when, when the world loses confidence in the dollar, I suspect it's when that will happen, or uh, the banks just get so shaky that they refuse to lend to each other. Anyway, my friends, be prepared because it is coming. There's no doubt about it. It is definitely coming our way. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please like, comment, and subscribe below. And in the meantime, this is Hound Dog Steve wishing you a very pleasant evening, and we will talk very, very shortly. You take care now. See ya. Bye.